Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie with Make and Decorate and today I'm going to show how I do quilting, machine quilting with uh, wavy lines. And I learned this from Krista Watson, sorry it's my dog, Krista Watson from this book of hers um, and she also has a good video um, showing how she does it as well. Uh, so I'll link to her website. But uh, in this book, I'll just show you a picture of, ooh, there we go. Um, these are wavy lines and they're done without marking anything. And because you're um, turning the fabric back and forth, it fools the eye into seeing something that doesn't look like, you know, not lined up or off centered or anything. Plus, I think it gives a really pretty, flowy, organic look and feel to, to the quilt. And if you need to quilt something quickly, this is a really good machine quilting stitch to do. So uh, I'm gonna go over to the machine and show you how I do it. So I've quilted all the fabric of here. The design of this quilt has a pixelated heart in the center and I've got a red color theme going here. So I am changing my top thread to the red that'll blend in with this. And um, I'm keeping the bobbin thread the same throughout because this is, this flannel is the backing and it, it blends right in. You can barely see, but you'll, you'll get the texture. And the batting I'm using is 100% uh, wool. It's really very nice and it quilts pretty nicely too. This is the wavy line pattern that I'm doing on the quilt. So I did the vertical lines first and then I decided to do one cross line to make like this um, um, cross hatch or whatever, but I'm meant to mimic the, um, the plaid pattern on here with that. So that was my little uh, design concept there. All right, so we'll get this going and place it in the machine. Um, where I wear the machine girls, um, gloves, but you can wear gardening gloves or whatever, but I definitely need something to grip the quilt. Um, whenever I forget to put the gloves on and I start to quilt, I realize immediately that that's not gonna work. I have my stitch length a little bit bigger at a 3.0 um, because going through all this thickness, it works really well and it, the stitches don't get too tiny and look tight and pulled. I'm using a walking foot and um, I have the presser foot pressure set to zero. Uh, and I actually learned um, this recently from a technician even uh, who said that um, whenever you use the walking foot, you should, you should change the presser foot pressure to zero because it will be a lot less wear and tear on the walking foot. Um, so, that and I've noticed it is much easier to move the fabric under the walking foot because it still has feed dogs on the top that will grip and pull the fabric through. Um, so you don't need all that presser, pressure pressing down um, plus the grip of the feed dogs. So also a 90, uh, size 90 needle uh, for quilting. So here's another thing. Uh, when you're starting off the quilt, it's easy and you don't have to pull the threads to the front or anything. You just start off of the quill part on the batting and you just start sewing and quilting. Um, so that's nice and easy. But then when you get to the part where here, um, that I'm starting right here in the scent, you know, in the middle of the quilt. Uh, so I will need to pull my thread up and I do tie a knot um, on the top. With my machine and um, with quilts that you, you know, are not entering into a show, you can um, just do, if your machine has a knot feature where it does like three or four stitches to knot the fabric, um, use that. I've been using that at every start and finish. And it's a little redundant here, but I do the, the knot um, to get started, plus I tie the threads, but then when I get to the bottom, 
um, I will uh, just knot off and use the scissors to cut the thread. So that's just how I'm doing it. You can do it however you feel, but that I think has been producing a pretty nice looking quilting and without threads kind of sticking out everywhere. So I'm gonna get right next to this line. I'm gonna put my needle down and up and then pull the bobbin thread up. And through this quilt, it doesn't always come up so easily, but I see it. So I use these little tweezers and these get in there and really I kind of put it upside down and grab it like that and then pull it up. All right. So, and then I cut these down to like a reasonable length that I'll be able to tie the knot after I get done with this row. Okay. That's Cooper. Cooper. All right, so now I'm pressing my knot feature and it's gonna do like four stitches right in a row to knot this. And then once that's done, I can just start quilting. So as I am quilting, all I'm gonna do is move it slightly to the right and to the left and that's what's going to create this nice, soft, wavy line. So here we go. Turning it this way, and now I'm going to turn it that way. Back to this way. And once your hands get too far up, then you have to stop, readjust, and continue on. Okay, and now um, I have to pull up this weight of the quilt because it's starting to drag down. Whenever you feel a little bit of resistance, you gotta re reconnoiter your quilt and get some slack so that you're not pulling with the weight of the quilt. Walking foot has been squeaking, but I've oiled it and I've cleaned the fuzz out, so I'm not sure if it's just that all of the the fluffiness of the wool batting is creating that, but I know it gets a little annoying to, to hear it, but I've done everything. <laughs> it's working beautifully, it's just just a little squeaky. slight turns that will create these really pretty curves. I get down to the bottom close and I will press the knot off feature again and then clip my threads. All right you can see this right here. Really soft curve and that's all there is to it and it just really saves a lot of time when you don't have to mark the quilt and um, it's it's a little it's a little like in between um, free motion and machine quilting even though you're quilting with a walking foot you're kind of like free motioning these wavy lines all right so I'll do another row
line really blends in but you can still I can still see the texture and then the more I do this then it's gonna be more like this and then you really will be able to see the texture it's pretty so give it a try let me know how you do and if you want to see another video on how this is done, visit Krista Watson's website, a link in the description. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on the wavy line machine quilting. And uh, also check out my podcast, Make and Decorate with Stephanie Socha Design. Uh, I talk about anything from sewing, quilting, to interior decorating. Uh, and if you like the video, plus a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks, I'll see you next time.